number 36 hydrogen iodide when it encounters the hot wire it actually decomposes into its element and if we do that for hydrogen chloride we do not see the same um, observations so what is actually happening okay why it actually happens is because of hi okay, breaking into to form back hydrogen and iodine elements so we have two of them to balance out the equation whereas for chlorine okay, they are saying that it doesn't really happen it doesn't form hydrogen and chlorine elements when it enc encounters the, the hot wire why this is so is actually due to the size of the atoms okay? iodine atoms are much larger than chlorine atoms because of the extra shell so when they overlap with the hydrogen here Okay, I should have drawn it closer. Okay, the area of overlap is not um, what we call effective right, percentage wise. Whereas because chlorine is smaller, hydrogen okay, can come closer and whatever area that overlaps actually is more significant. So smaller, larger percentage of overlap, larger atom smaller percentage of overlap so this is a weaker bond which is caused by iodine becoming or being bigger than chlorine right so this makes statement true the size of the halogen atom actually causes the different observations the size as we discussed will affect the overlapping which will mean that this is a greater distance okay the bigger your atom is the bigger your your longer your covalent bond is and then that means actually it's a weaker bond also so the strength of the covalent bond this is weaker and this is stronger it will also contribute to the different observations statement three the standard enthalpy of formation of each products well we have hydrogen iodine hydrogen chlorine all of them are elements so the standard enthalpy of formation of elements we know them to be zero for all of them so it doesn't really make any difference between the two reactions so statement three does not explain right why we have our observations here Which of the molecules will be present in the mixture produced by chlorination of methane? Well, what molecules might come out actually to do with what radicals might come out, right? Hydrogen. For hydrogen to come out, we will need to have a radical of hydrogen reacting with another radical of hydrogen. Well, this will not happen, right? We do not really get um, hydrogen radicals coming out. So this statement one is wrong, right? That means two and three must be correct we can get hydrogen chloride coming out because okay, for example we can have um, methane and a chlorine radical and then what we can get is a CH3 radical coming out and a HCl so this is possible in the propagation step dichloromethane when can this come out we could have a radical CH2Cl okay, and another chlorine radical that combines together to get CH2Cl2 that is also possible so 2 and 3 are correct Thirty-eight. which of the following is oxidized by the given reactants we have an aldehyde that can react with 
a mild oxidizing agent as phthalene reagent, the aldehyde will become the acid. Right, so this is possible. This is also an aldehyde and it will react with Tollens reagent also, a mild oxidizing agent to become an acid. This aldehyde and this is 2,4-DMPH which actually when they react is actually a, a condensation reaction so it is not a redox reaction. So 1 and 2 correct. Thirty-nine. We have this ester, and what happens when it's hydrolyzed by sodium hydroxide? So hydrolysis, you attack the ester bond. We look for the ester bond, which is here. I'll redraw it to make it a bit clearer. C O O H. Right, and how do we break apart the molecule under hydrolysis? We will cut the ester bond over here. This part that contains the C double bond O is the acid part. And this part is the alcohol part. So if you were to re reform them back, we will have the acid COO minus or COOH but because it's in the presence of an alkali, this COOH will become a salt, COO minus and A plus. Right? If it was in an acidic hydrolysis, this will become COOH, not COO minus and, and not a salt. This alcohol, we restructure it back. This O will be receiving a hydrogen and all that. So comparing these structures, CH3, 1, 2, 3, 4, CH, and then we have this group joined to the CH, and then we have CH2, OH. So this one is actually the right side. This one, perhaps more obvious, and this one will be for this side, where there's still the double bond and a COO and E+. Right, this structure doesn't come out from here, so only 1 and 2. Forty. Which one can be used to make sodium lactate from lactic acid? So let's draw lactic acid. CH. We have the hydroxyl group and we have the carboxyl group. Alright, we want this one. We want only one hydrogen to be replaced. The hydrogen that's to be replaced should come from the here right, and not from here. Now if you use sodium, sodium is reactive, it will actually react with the OH here or rather it react with the H here and the H here. So okay, I'll write it out. Sodium will actually replace both this hydrogen. So we only want this to be replaced so we can't use sodium. Sodium hydrogen carbonate will react with the carboxylic acid here, but it is not able to react with the OH here. All right, the OH is not acidic enough to react with sodium hydrogen carbonate. So, so that is possible if because we only want sodium over here. Same thing, sodium hydroxide will be reacting only with the acid right and not the hydroxy here so 
we can choose either two or three to react but not one 